We know that red blood cell transfusion is a costly resource uh, and also that it's an increasingly scarce resource as demand from an aging population increases. Um, at the same time, there's a growing uh, and substantial body of evidence that red blood cell transfusion is associated with harm, increased morbidity and mortality. Uh, and in light of that, there's been various efforts at trying to reduce red blood cell transfusion, um, predominantly by adopting a more conservative approach to transfusion, but also increasingly so looking at modalities to try and boost patients' own red blood cell mass. Iron is of course essential for red blood cell production and is the most common nutritional deficiency worldwide. Our understanding of iron metabolism has increased enormously since the discovery of hepcidin, the polypeptide master regulator of iron metabolism. Um, and this has explained why, whilst oral iron may be effective in patients who are otherwise well, it's ineffective in patients who are acutely or chronically unwell because hepcidin as acute phase reactant blocks enteral uptake of oral iron and blocks its use uh, within the body. In contrast to oral iron, IV iron bypasses the need for enteral absorption and is part of an established treatment algorithm for specific conditions such as end-stage renal failure where it reduces the need or the dose of erythroid stimulating agent. In this study we were particularly interested in the role of IV iron in terms of its safety and efficacy across the whole range of clinical conditions. Um, specifically whether IV iron was not only associated with an increase in hemoglobin but a reduction in red blood cell transfusion requirement. Um, we were interested in major safety endpoints, um, morbidity and mortality and in particular the association between IV iron and infection. We conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis of all full-text randomized control trials where IV iron was compared to either oral iron or no iron. We conducted a sensitivity analysis on transfusion and infection endpoints by excluding studies with a high risk of bias according to the Cochrane Collaboration Tool for Assessing Risk of Bias. We also undertook a meta-regression specifically to examine the effect of IV iron dose and baseline iron study results on the association between IV iron and the primary outcome measures. 72 studies, including 10,605 participants reporting one or more outcomes of interest, were included in the meta-analysis. The included studies involved a wide range of clinical specialties, including renal, obstetric, surgical, hematological, oncological, gastroenterology, and others. The included studies also involved a wide range of IV iron preparations and dosing regimes. We found that IV iron was associated with a both clinically and statistically significant increase in mean hemoglobin. Um, and that was where the IV iron was compared with oral iron or no iron. IV iron was also associated with a significant reduction in risk of allergenic red blood cell transfusion. It also appears that the effectiveness of IV iron was enhanced by concomitant use of erythroid stimulating agents. We also found IV iron was associated with a significant increased risk of infection, again compared with both oral iron and no iron supplementation. In terms of other safety endpoints, there was no significant difference in mortality or serious adverse events. IV iron is increasingly advocated to treat anemia with the aim of reducing red blood cell transfusion. In this study, IV iron appeared effective in reducing red blood cell transfusion across a range of clinical categories, dose, and uh, types of IV iron. And so IV iron may have an important role as part of a patient blood management strategy as a way of reducing red blood cell transfusion and it may well be that its effectiveness is enhanced by erythroid stimulating agents. At the same time, our results showing an association between IV iron and an increased risk of infection are interesting. Newer IV iron agents are associated with less free iron uh, and it may be that it's the free iron that is important and this explains the difference between our results and other studies. There is no doubt that patient blood management will continue to be an area of substantial research importance and further trials involving IV iron are important, but they should 
certainly be focused on patient-centered outcomes and include infection as a predetermined endpoint.